everybody. Tim Kawakami here. We are recording North and South with co-host Los, Los Angeles Times, Dylan Hernandez. You back from Asia yet? Last time we talked, I don't know, you were still kind of asleep when we talked last time, a little emergency podcast. You got some rest? You got some... Uh, you I, like? slept like, I slept 15 hours last night. Good, I slept good. through everything. My phone was pinging all night. <laughs> Sorry to my coworkers that I didn't return any text messages yesterday. Got FBI a bunch of was trying. To, FBI I was trying to reach. Yeah, you. You were. Uh, the focus I'm a new man you. right now, man. 15 hours of sleep. Will you look do that. good. You look I a lot feel, better than you did. I feel great. <laughs> you a lot better than you did in your uh, soul uh, hotel room and whatever that was. 3:30 in the morning your time, but we banged that thing out. A lot of people listened to it. I am glad. Uh, of course, we're still on, we're the North and South podcast. We are the Shohei Otani, uh, weird things, conversational podcast. I'm, yes, I'm proud of that. That's what we are now. Uh, okay. Otani had his statement. It certainly wasn't a press conference the other day, um, saying that he had knew nothing about if a Mizuhara's gambling, he did not give him, you know, the money, uh, himself. It was, a theft. I don't know if he said those words, but it was in that in the course of that. I thought it was a pretty passionate statement. Obviously, it left many, many questions unanswered. Uh, many other people have asked them. Interestingly, I was at the Giants A's exhibition game last night, and there were a few thoughts expressed to me from different people there, just kind of wondering, no accusations, just kind of wondering about all the things that are left unanswered. Dylan, you were there. You heard it in the, you know, you understand the Japanese. I don't know if it was translated well. It seemed to be translated well to me. Um, what you you know, you've been at many of these Otani situations, certainly none like this. What did you think of him? What did you think of that statement? Uh, and how do you think this all unfolds in the next few weeks? Yeah, he was very direct. You know, he spoke very clearly. There was kind of no hesitation in his voice. He, I mean, he went in. You know, however you want to look at that. Um, you know, there were obviously a couple of like major kind of questions that were left unanswered, uh, which I kind of find interesting given the fact that, again, he's very kind of aware of like things, right? Like he he's usually, even if he might not, you know, who knows what he reads, what he doesn't, but he always kind of seems to have his pulse on kind of like what's going on and like what people want to hear. And obviously even going into this thing, I think the questions were, you know, how did Ipe Mizuhara get his access to his bank account? One. And two, uh, you know, let's even say, okay, whatever. He, you know, he he was granted access and all that. How was he able to move that sum of money without that being flagged? Right. And so nine times. Those, nine yeah, times. It was, yeah. Those things went unanswered, you know, and I'm sure he understood uh that people wanted questions to those answers. He didn't answer them. Obviously, didn't take any questions, you know, uh, which kind of led me to actually think like, you know, OK, well, so what was kind of the purpose of all this? Right. And I think, you know, uh, say the day before, you know, um, you know, somebody like me, right, I haven't covered a freeway series and I don't know how long, um, you know, it's, just, it's the kind of final exhibition series before the start of the regular season. Usually, you know, beat people, take it off. Columnists don't show up to this thing because they're kind of nothing games. You know, I had to be there in case he talked, right? For the for the first game of that that uh, freeway series uh, against the Angels, and you know, I think that there was right there were a lot of people there waiting just for that. And I part of me kind of wonders, okay, like let me at least like address this now to kind of clear that room, right? Um, you know, as as much as you know, the Dodgers were kind of talking at the beginning of spring about how many people, how many media people were in their clubhouse and kind of invading their, you know, according to them, invading their space and stuff. I think everybody understood that this was kind of positive attention, right? I mean, the, the reason there were so many people there was because there was interest in the Dodgers, that, you know, this this team that was already a 100-win team just added the best guy in baseball, like, where's this going to go? And it was kind of a – it had, like, a positive feel there, even if it might have been a little crowded. Uh, you know, and obviously that that has switched since, you know, the, the scandal is, you know, broken. And, you know, the the – the air in the room, it's kind of a little bit more negative, you know, you would say, right? And so maybe he just kind of understood, okay, well, you know what? Let me just kind of address this to at least clear the room of that type of air. I've addressed this. I've, you know, I'll say, hey, I've, I've answered as much as I, these are the limits of what I can say. And, you know, like theoretically, if you were to talk after opening day, even, right? I mean, I think the whole nature of these questions, right? If, if you know, after 
opening day on Thursday, there are going to be questions asked to a lot of guys. And I'm guessing it's going to be mostly focused around baseball because, again, he he spoke out, right? He, he said at least enough, I think, uh, you know, which was already more probably than a lot of us were expecting, you know, because I think from like at least an American vantage point, you know, when something like this happens, you would expect him to kind of say like, hey, like, I'm sorry, they're ongoing investigations. Um you know, uh, I can't really say much. I think that would kind of be the standard thing. And so, you know, in some ways he probably said more than I think a lot of a lot of people were expecting. And he's kind of hoping that, again, that that will temporarily kind of clear the clubhouse of of this, you know, dark cloud that's kind of hanging over it, even though, you know, it might have kind of blown off to the side a little bit. It's still there, but at least it's not hovering directly over them maybe right now. Yeah, he said what he's going to say, right? I mean, I think that's the general sense. He's that's what he's going to say today, tomorrow, the next day, you know, so you don't have to keep saying what's your first response going to be. Well, one little thing I was struck by, maybe you weren't surprised at all by this, having been to so many Otani pressers, is as his answer is being translated by his new translator, we can say that Will Ariton, is that how you pronounce his name? Yeah, Ariton, um, yeah. Who I thought did a very good job, and he's a, he's a seasoned, experienced guy at it. When he was coming to the end of each translation, Otani knew when the end was. He didn't have to wait to see, did you just finish? So he does understand some English. There's no question, right? He understands at least yeah, the rhythm sure. of it. He mm -hmm. understood when he was coming to the end of the translation because there wasn't a beat. It was da 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 da, -da and I did not do this. And then he started the next answer in Japanese or next statement in Japanese. I thought that was interesting because another thing I was struck by in the statement was that him saying he didn't know what was going on. Now, whether we really believe him or not on this, even through that second game, because we all saw the shots of him talking to Ipe in the dugout, like towards the end of that game. Then the story is they went into the clubhouse and that's when, you know, Mark Waller speaks or whatever. And Ipe tells the team, and, but then Otani says, I understood some of what he was saying that you understand like his connection to this team is if it was Ipe, right. He did not understand what was being said. And if A is speaking in English to the team, Otani doesn't understand all of it. And again, it, it's a practical thing, but it does tell you if all this is even, you know, 80% true, the isolation he must feel without Ipe around him. And this, whatever he was, close friend, whatever he was, translator, business partner, driver, all these things we're talking about, water carrier, like he must feel amazingly isolated without, he must feel like that connection. So how does that get replaced? Let's just say he's mostly cleared or whatever explanation he gives kind of like, isn't connected to him. This is an if a thing. Let's just say that he doesn't have him anymore, Dylan. So, and this is a guy that what I've heard this, like he was the only person that was with, Otani on his free agent negotiations. And Yamamoto comes in with cars of people, you know, all these entourage, as many free agents do. And Otani was with one guy, Ipe. That was this guy. And so Ipe could have translated things differently, right? Though there was no way to know what he was telling. It's like going in with Putin. If you're just there with Putin's translator, you don't know 100% sure what he's saying to Putin. Not, com not comparing Putin to Otani, by the way. Um, but where does Otani go without this guy who was his lifeline in America? His wife isn't around him, right? It's like, who's there with him in the room when things have to be decided? I don't know. I don't know that you have an answer to it, but what kind of loss is this to Otani? Yeah, I think, you know, Otani's talked about this briefly, you know, over the years, just how he's not a very trusting person, you know? Um, you know, there was kind of this uh, Disney... Um, you know, uh, documentary. It was kind of a real like propaganda piece. It felt like that that they aired last year. But you know, one one of the to me the most interesting part of that whole thing was, you know, there was a segment where he was kind of like he wanted to ask questions of the teams that he played for, right? So the Nippon Ham Fighters and the Angels, and you know, to Nippon Ham he was kind of like, yeah, you know, did you really think I could play both ways, or was this something you were just telling me, right? Like, look, at the end of the day, I got what I wanted. You know, but um, at the same time, I was always he said I was always curious if the team actually believed that I could play both ways or if they just said that so they could sign me, you know, uh, with the Angels. You know, I think he had always kind of harbored suspicions that, you know, when they told him, hey, you're going to play every day, 
that that wasn't them believing in the fact that he could play every day. He thought that they were trying to make him quit either pitching or hitting, right? You just kind of put up or shut up type. You know, if you can't do it every day, you, you have to quit one. And so this isn't somebody who trusts very many people, obviously, you know? And yeah, that was, like you said, that was the one guy he did trust, you know? And so now he is like, you're right. I think he's extremely isolated, you know? And I think if you kind of even, you know, kind of look back at like, I mean, the agency, right? I mean, I, I, I've always had problems and I'm not sure if I mentioned this the last time we talked, cause it was three in the morning. My, you know, <laughs> brain was scrambled eggs, whatever. But one issue that I've always kind of had with, a lot of American, you know, organizations, whether it be newsrooms, frankly, or baseball teams or right, um, is that they don't, you know, I mean, it, look, if I'm CAA and my best client, my biggest client is a Japanese guy, I'm going to have some people, I would personally like make sure to have some people in place around, right, that speak the language, understand the culture. Here, there was kind of none of that, right? They did the bare minimum. They got them one guy. You know, and we're just going to communicate through that guy. And well, eventually, you know, he'll come to understand our way. He'll learn how to speak God's language, which is English, of course, you know, and, <laughs> right. You know, I mean, seriously, I mean, that's that's, you know, and that's like a very like American attitude. Right. Is yep. that like, yep. well, we know better, you know, we know. Right. And we I think we, you know, conflate a lot of times our military prowess with intelligence, which uh, I don't think is very smart. A lot of, you know, because I mean, frankly, like. Look, like I, I've done education in a way like in, in both sides, like one, I'll just tell you, like one is a lot higher than the other, you know, one, one school felt a lot easier to me than the other one, you know, and, um, but I think you know, it's financial, it's, it's financial, it's financial, yeah, right, it's, you know, and so like, financial. yeah, but like they don't, you know, have this, um, you know, they, they put him in a place where, again, like he just had like one guy. Right. And there wasn't and even there, they're like little subtleties, too, in terms of like, you know, uh, like I think Otani, frankly, would have had trouble if he had like a very Japanese person, you know, like Ipe Mizuhara. Again, it's, it's interesting. Right. He, you know, was born in Japan, uh, did a lot of his schooling here, though. Right. Mm -hmm. Formative years were spent here. Uh, it was probably kind of just the right balance culturally for him. Right. Japanese enough, but not too Japanese and kind of being able to like read like what type of person would Otani kind of get along with. You know, my suspicion is if they bring somebody again, you know, like too American also to try to replace Ipe, that's not going to work, you know, because the guy's going to feel too alien. And who's in, you know, who's in position to make that determination for them, right? I mean, I don't think the Dodgers understand this. I don't think CAA understands this. And I think you're right. He's going to be very isolated now. Now, you know, I, I think he's probably very, right? Just uh, his talent has isolated him in a way. He's always tried to do things other people, you know, didn't think he could do and really kind of put himself, again, going back to when he was 18, you know, most people in Japan, even like when he was even trying to do this, the, the overwhelming, you know, Japanese society was kind of looking at him like, hey, man, you're underestimating Japanese baseball. This was not positively taken. You know, and so um, I think this is somebody who's used to being alone, uh, kind of. And what I've seen just from him is, you know, every time his back's against the wall, right? The, the two times like he blew out his elbow, like he homered like twice the next day or the next game. You know, this is somebody who's like nails, right? This is this is Barry, you know, and you cover Barry Bonds, you know, not to compare him and Bonds personality wise, but in terms of just kind of that mental strength to be able to channel everything into the job to do on the field to me this guy's barry bonds he's michael jordan he's tiger woods so i don't think it's going to affect him there but you you're right you know i, I do kind of wonder uh just kind of on a day-to-day -day thing i mean he is married now though so maybe that kind of helps she, take off the burden can a little she bit. move here can she move she here? Moved here i mean he I has think... moved here yeah and yeah so i mean she was on obviously on the trip with him to korea mm -hmm. you know and he kind of felt comfortable enough to kind of put her out there um so yeah i think um you know We'll see. It'll be interesting. I, I'm not expecting too much to go bad on the field. You know, I think if it does, it's going to be more from the standpoint that he's playing in a new league, unfamiliar pitchers. Uh, he's never been a great April player. You know, uh, June and July, if you kind of look historically, are his months. I'm going to guess that that's going to continue to be the case here. But um, yeah, but you are right. He He's kind of been kind of cut off. And, you know, maybe this could turn into like a good thing. You know, Dave Roberts came out. And said yesterday, I mean, talk about, you know, throwing on throwing the guy under the bus and then running backwards over him. But 
you know, Roberts came out yesterday and said, hey, this is going to be good for us, right? Mm -hmm. Actually, because if anything, Ipe kind of served as too much like of a, as, of a you know, of a buffer, right? Yep. And all of our communication was through him. Now we can talk to the guy directly and maybe it'll help him integrate him more into the team. And, you know, guys, you know, and again, like not that Darvish, Darvish was never quite as private as Otani. But like one thing, you know, Darvish kind of talked about was when he came to the Dodgers up until that point, again, this is, he was a high school prodigy. You know, he goes to Nippon Ham, he gets drafted. This kid's different than everybody else, right? So already he's making a lot more money than a lot of guys. He was isolated there, you know? He comes over here to play for the Rangers, isolated because of the language in part, you know, uh, the, the customs. And, you know, Darvish talked, told me about how, like, hey, like, you know what? Actually, first day I was with the Dodgers. I'm at the dining table eating by myself because I'm used to eating by myself. And I think it was like Justin Turner just came and sat with him, mm -hmm. you know? And next thing you know, he was actually able to have normal interactions with people that are commonplace for every other player. And he found that, like, you know what? This is great. You know, because Darvish was telling me he was losing his passion for the game. I don't think Otani's had this problem, but how he was, you know, Darvish said, I was losing my passion for the game. I was even thinking about retiring because it wasn't fun anymore. And all of a sudden, I realized, like, hey, you know what? I get to be part of a team, you know? And if you look at Darvish now on the Padres, uh, and kind of the, the leadership role he's taken there, right? And he's kind of been the guy, right? A couple of new Korean players came in, a new Japanese guy came in, and he was kind of like, it sounded like a one-man welcoming party to this yep. guy, you know? And so maybe this is, you know, in the long term, maybe this is a good thing, right? Maybe Otani will kind of understand, like, hey, you know what? I don't have to be on an island by myself, and I can be part of a team and be just as successful and maybe even have more fun. So, um yeah, we'll we'll see how this goes. It, it can go certainly in a you know hundred different ways at this point. Well, two things. The one thing that was brought up that he probably does understand at least certainly terms of English. He can he communicate. You know, he can communicate a little bit in English. I would imagine maybe in Spanish too. Uh, yeah. Like he doesn't need he doesn't need someone to bring him around and speak to every single person for him. I think you know the baseball is certainly a universal part about it, but I do think he does understand some things and can communicate certain things in Spanish and, and in English. And the other thing is, I had maybe this is what I'm hearing lately is that Ipe was kind of his advisor. Like, and, you know, he definitely had some, you know, the fact that he brought him and only him to these negotiations. I don't know if it was every team, but I think it was with every team to me, leads me to believe that he was advising him, it wasn't just his interpreter, he was his friend and advisor. Maybe that's good. Like, you know, like maybe he needs to have other people who he can rely on and he trusts and he brings into it and he will have a hard time. Like I imagine trusting all of them, but listen, he had one person and he did a terrible job picking that person. And he's probably going to do a better job. You know, anybody better than someone who cost him, you know, theoretically 4.5 million and put his name on a gambling, an illegal gambling uh, investigation. Um, but I guess like, what, I don't know that you knew it that well, but do you think, he was like an advisor for for Otani that he was like in some way driving some of this career. Oh, oh for sure. You know, and I'll say this, right? I mean, uh, over the years, having covered Japanese players and having gotten close to some of them, even the times I got close to them were for me to be is when they needed me to basically be a cultural interpreter mm -hmm. for them. Right. When they didn't understand why is that guy? Why is that teammate mad at that teammate? Right. Mm -hmm. Or. Why did the GM come out and say this? Everybody seems upset today, right? Like, what's going on, right? And I, and again, we we kind of forget just fundamentally how different these businesses are. Um, you know, I think I mentioned this last time too, but you know, in Japan, the parent company, right? Again, is, right? These would not be the Los Angeles Dodgers in Japan. It'd be the Guggenheim Dodgers, and the mm -hmm. Dodgers would exist strictly to promote Guggenheim. So. Yes, baseball is part of a business, but it's not the business, right? Which is the difference here. Like these teams are operated like as a business and and just kind of the the effects of that, right? Just fundamentally the way people view the game is so different, I think, because of that fundamental thing, right? I mean, again, even something like talking to the media, right, is viewed, I think, in our country as like, hey, you have an obligation to sell this game because this is our core business, you know? It's not just to play well and, you know, kind of indirectly, you know, enhance the image of the Yakult, you know, right? Uh, probiotic drink brand, right? This is, you know, you're supposed to sell this game. And so, again, I think that there are a lot of things because of that fundamental difference, you know, and kind of when you kind of take that out and, you know, play it out over, 
you know, through different things. It's just it, it, the view of things is just so different. And the guys over there, even though to us might seem like things that are common sense here, they just can't understand, you know. And frankly, like, again, if you drop us into, you know, a lot of times in a Japanese baseball setting. And again, I just spent the week over there recently. Uh, there were things even that like I didn't quite understand, right? Why well, why is this, right? And I talked to the writers and they kind of explained it to me and I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, like from that vantage point, that makes sense, you know? So again, I found that, you know, again, just in my experience, anytime I've gotten kind of to know these guys, you know, again, you Darvish, you know, um, actually while he was here, we weren't like super close. We got close because there was that sign stealing thing with the Astros. He had something that he wanted to communicate to the fans of Los Angeles right and he needed me for that right and so again like that to me is probably even the bigger part than the than the, just the words is explaining like where am i right and so yeah absolutely the fact that like ipe was like his only guy he was reliant the way he viewed the world that he was in right here was entirely through the prism of ipe mizuhara and so yeah that's that's like that's a huge thing and again finding somebody to replace that is going to be difficult i think and if not impossible at this point because he's not going to trust anybody he was already somebody who didn't trust anybody to begin with but you know what maybe it's time for him to kind of figure things out on his own right he's been here long enough he again he may not understand everything about the the language but um you know he understands enough i think he's observant uh, i think he you know again based on the way he his Japanese is in terms of like the strength of his diction, how quick witted he is. I think that this is somebody who's very like intellectually capable. And, you know, again, I, I get this idea of, you know, um, you know, right. I just want to do my job and not really focus on anything, you know, I mean, to be honest, right. Like I'm terrible at most things in my life, right. That are, you know, if I don't want to have to deal with it, I'll tell my wife to deal with it just because I don't want to. So I kind of understand that idea of just want to focus on my work. But um, yeah, you know, I think uh, it's it's definitely going to be kind of this new era for him of sorts uh, in terms of again because because he's lost that guy. Yeah, I'll just say that you know the simplest thing, the way to look at this to me, and and I've been criticized by some of my friends who are rightly skeptical journalists uh, when I pose this to them is that the first story is true, the one the first one that they told to ESPN. That he accrued these gambling debts. He went to Otani as a friend. Now, whether he was able to get these loan, you know, the, this credit line from the illegal gambler because he was Otani's friend or because Otani in some way was some kind of backing for this, we, we're not going to know at this point. But that Otani came to him or helped him out and paid these debts for him in a very naive way, in a way that allowed his name to be on the account that sent the money to the illegal bookmaker that the, you know, the authorities saw. That's how this started, that he was grossly negligent in a lot of different ways, but not part of a gambling operation. And then the handlers screwed it up by trying to change it again, you know, putting Mizuhara out there to admit that, then realizing maybe that's not what they wanted to admit, and then trying to change it. So there's a lie there. There's a lie somewhere. Uh, and now Otani's involved in a lie. A terrible PR lie. One of those two things was a lie. Uh, and they're claiming it's the first one. I think the second one is the lie. Um, if that's all true, Otani could be in some trouble. There's some tax issues with that. There's some, you know, just problematic judgment issues with that. But I do think that is, he will be, you know, criticized for it and he will be made fun of for it, where he's just so naive that he just handed over $4.5 million to a friend who, turn out to be uh, incredibly untrustworthy or however this works. But I do think that is the simplest way to look at this and to me the likeliest thing given. And that means Otani lied in the statement too, right? That means he lied. So yes, that will come know. back to him. And there could be, you know, and this issue that they, you know, they claim Otani's new spokespeople, whoever said that they've gone to the authorities on this massive theft and ESPN's try to get them to say, what authority did you report this to and they won't say so it just could be this weird lie cover-up of him being a friend and paying off this guy's debt the whole thing i just said do you think that is the simplest solution to this simplest answer and then what are if, if you do agree what are the problems from there yeah i think well i think frankly everything's on the table at this point right we just can't i can't you know um 
you know, again, the, the story he's given is kind of, right, parts of it are plausible, you know? Well, which again, story? Well, which story? Right, right? Well, the story that's out right now that he just had no clue, right? Like, yeah. that is, right, not now the, again, exactly how this money got moved without him noticing is kind of a problematic element to it. But, like, it's not entirely implausible. You know, I think, you know, and this kind of goes back, though, to, you know, I think something we've talked about just in terms of like him and his privacy, right? And his kind of not letting anybody in. I mean, this isn't just like the media not knowing who Shohei Otani is. Like, I mean, his teammates don't know who he is, right? Like nobody, as much as, you know, people around are saying like he couldn't do this. Nobody can say that with any certainty. Nobody knew him. Nobody knew he even had a girlfriend, right? I mean, it, that hit everybody by surprise. And so, you know, look, at this uh, Look, in my now, the, again, this image of like kind of the naive, right, uh, you know, kind of overgrown baseball loving boy. Um, look, I haven't seen. Here's the thing. In his defense, I've never seen anything to the con to, to contradict that. Right. I mean, even last year, you know, I was, you know, as, as you can imagine, I, I, I tend to be a little bit skeptical, you know, and for the last few years, we've been asking Otani. What about free agency? Are you going to leave the Angels? Do you want to leave the Angels? Do you want to right? Every every possible opportunity that I had, I slid a question like that in. When they played the Dodgers last year, I asked them, what do you think of the Dodgers? What would it be like to play over there? You know, um, And every time he just said, you know what? I'm not thinking about the future. I'm just thinking about now and getting this team to the playoffs. And you know what? You can say whatever you want, but like he pitched his way to an injury for a team that was like four, and a, four or five games out from the last wild card spot. You know? And as he's about to hit his for, for Asian period. Yeah. Right. As he's and like, to, yeah. yeah. Now keep in mind, like Max Scherzer, right. The Dodgers had experience with this a couple of years earlier. Wouldn't pitch in the NLCS mm -hmm. because he felt something because he was about to become a free agent. You know, uh, that's kind of the right. And so, you know, I kind of looked at that and I was like, well, maybe that's all there is here. You know, maybe what you see is like what you get. Right. Um, at the same time, like common sense kind of tells you, I mean, how do you, you know, that's it. Like, how can you kind of have confidence in that this is what it is when we've never seen anybody like this? I mean, he is like a Japanese, the protagonist of a Japanese comic book. You know, there's we haven't seen anything else. I mean, again, you know, we people talk about Japanese players being guarded and not very revealing and this and that. Trust me, this is a whole different level. Yeah. Yeah. I have gotten to know Japanese players. I do not know anything about this guy other than, again, that he seems to be really sharp. He's got a nice smile and he's really good at baseball. That's kind of it, you know? So, yeah, you know, I, I don't, you know, and that's to me kind of this underlying question here is like, who is Shohei Otani, right? And it's going to be, this is actually going to be one of these weird cases where, you know, I think a lot of times like we, we know the guy and it kind of colors the way we view like an unfolding case. This is going to be the opposite. What we learn in this case is going to teach us about Shohei Otani. This is probably going to be the most revealing thing that, you know, outside of the field that he's ever done because, you know, we're either going to learn, actually, he really, right, he really doesn't pay attention to anything outside of baseball and just allow this money to get stolen from him. Or, you know, uh, maybe there is more there, and, right, this guy's like a lot more Machiavellian than anybody could have imagined, right? Um, you know, and so at this point, you know, it's kind of hard for me to sit here and speculate just because, again, I've been covering this guy for, you know, again, I... 17 is last year in Japan. I went over there and visited with them. Even then, I kind of came out, came out of the thing thinking like, and I went into it thinking, this guy can't possibly be this good. I walked out of it thinking like, eh, maybe that's all there is there. I mean, cab drivers were kind of like saying the same, you know, cab drivers in, in Japan were telling me all he talks about is baseball. Like he thought, you know, he, right. Yeah. I've given him rides and he's sitting in here with his teammates asking them like, when was the first home run you hit in little league? You know, like stuff like that. Right. Like he really just kind of sounded like a baseball loving kid. And so, yeah, again, we'll, we'll, you know, at this point, I know it's kind of hard, you know, to, you know, I wish I had answers right now. Certainly, you know, Major League Baseball wants to put this to bed. The Dodgers want to put this to bed, uh, you know, but I think this is going to be one of those cases that's going to play out probably over years, you know, and as the information kind of comes out, it's going to inform us again, who who is Otani? Yeah, he's been an empty vessel, which I think I talked about in a recent episode, like, which does open himself up to many interpretations because we just don't know. So we just fill in the gaps ourselves. And believe me, I've had people fill in the gaps in very positive and very negative ways over the last few weeks, the last few week, week or so, um, because they just don't know. He, oh, he couldn't just be that. He's got to be doing this. Or 
Of course he didn't know because he did, you know, it, it's, it's who he is. It's, it's the persona he's created here and in Japan, right? And not just here and in Japan too. So um, it just, it fuels a lot of discussion. It fuels a lot of mystery. Uh, he has only added to it, I think, the last few days, you know, with, with some clarification. Uh, and we'll just be talking about it over and over and over again. That's the, another single topic, North and South. We got to both go here. Well, I got to go. But uh, Dylan, you, you attack the American societal values uh, and school system. I appreciate that. Uh, and apparently military strength. I'm not sure exactly how you did that. I, well, I, would, I would argue military leads to economics. I get Absolutely. your point. But yeah, we, we let's, not, let's not get ourselves into any more trouble. Yeah, <laughs> Japan's got economic might and it's not very powerful militarily. But no. um, I referenced Putin, so you know I did my I had my own I had my own uh, detour there. <laughs> but uh, good to have you back in this country. Maybe you can get out to Seoul again and be sleepy, Dylan, one more time in in the near future. But uh, that was excellent. Good conversation. You got anything else to add here? Uh, no, I don't think so. I mean, I just thought it was interesting, right? The time ambassador got Montgomery, you know, okay, yeah. all the $25 other $25 million. Jeez. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing, right? These, the other NL West teams, you know, we're talking about the Dodgers, 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 but you know, Giants got their guy, you know? Um, yeah. That's got you know, two guys, NLS. Chapman and Snell. And I just Chapman put the Giants Snell. in the playoffs, uh, which I think isn't that huge a thing to say, although in the Bay area, given the fan negativity over the Giants, which may or may not be fair. I don't share the, the dramatic emotions of this, but I think they're a better team than they were last year, and they were not terrible last year. Uh, can they get six or seven more wins, I think? Matt Chapman, Blake Snell, jung Hu Lee, Jorge Soler. And I, and I was talking about this recruit Mike Kruko earlier today. I think the Dodgers, you know, we, we've talked about this. There's some problems on the, on the Dodgers there are. roster. Absolutely. It's not a perfect roster. They just signed Will Smith to an extension. He's a great player. Uh, he's off forgotten given their their big names. He's going to probably bat fourth, right, in, in this power pack lineup. Yeah. But I don't know who their third starter is. I don't know maybe even their second starter is if there's another, you know, guys don't come back in time. Mookie Betts, the shortstop we've talked about. I don't think the Giants are better than the Dodgers. I sure wouldn't say that. But Giants get in and play a five-game early round series against the Dodgers. I wouldn't, you know, and they've got Robbie Ray back and they've got Alex Cobb pitching. They got Logan Webb. They got Blake Snell. <sighs> Don't know if that's going to be a comfortable series for the Dodgers. So uh, we can go on and on about that. Let's get some, let's watch some games here. Uh, let's not go on too long, but I thank you for offering another topic though, Dylan. We, we, <laughs> we do get into other topics. This, this one, yeah. it's the North and South podcast. We, we do Otani and we do Harbaugh. So th those are our two things. And we'll harbor all right, all again soon, I'm sure. Yeah. All right, Dylan, I think that's it for today. Okay, sounds good. See you, everybody.